Interesting. Oh yeah. There you guys. <laughs> okay, before we play in the water, we got some work to do. I'm trying to turn this stock Land Cruiser into an expedition rig that's not just able to get me around Australia, but also hopefully much, much further. And what's the one thing you should always do first? Exactly, mount a louder exhaust. While a good sounding exhaust definitely gives you a smile on your face, now it's time to do something actually useful. And that is to install a locking differential on the rear axle. I decided to install a TJM Pro Locker, as it has proper beefy internals and solidly engages and disengages with pneumatic power. And for some extra reliability, I opted to have the stock pinion spacer replaced with a solid one. And now it's time to install it. Now with the locker installed we should be able to get plenty more traction on flexi trails. However, what does not have a lot of traction are these bolt street tires. So it's time to get some new ones. I am really excited. Finally, we got ourselves a new set of tires. And it's a big old question always, what sort of tire and what size you want to be running? I decided to go with an all-terrain tire uh, with a BF Goodrich all-terrain in 33 inch size. Why is that? It's a well-proven and durable tire and there are plenty out there, of course. Um, but most of all, also, this one is available in this size and this brand anywhere around the world. And that's really quite important if you're trying to go overlanding pretty much anywhere. Um, second, it's a 33 inch tire, which is, I believe, a really good size in 285 width for this size of rig. It's not too big and not too small. They're wrapped around some steel wheels just for budget reason. They're quite cheap with negative 25 offset to get as much track width as I can. Yeah, now that we got tires installed, locker installed and the exhaust installed, I think it's time to go a little bit plain.
get it a bit quicker than that. Yep, I need second, not yeah, first. Yeah, you need second. Oh yeah, I guess. Back from a weekend of wheeling, it's now time to address the elephant in the room. What the hell are these garden edging flares? Obviously, they're only temporary just to make it legal to drive it on the road. And I already got myself a really nice set of fiberglass flares. However, these add a full 65 to 70 millimeters in width, while my tires only stick out about 40 to 45 mil. So I'm going to do the sensible thing, what everybody would do. I'm going to take my $500 fiberglass flares and cut them in half. Look at that fitment. Nice. I'm quite excited because today we're going to mount this quick pitch Max Trex table. And the reason why I'm so excited about this product is because it's a multi purpose product. Um, which I really, really like on any sort of overlanding gear. So first of all, it's a really clever design on mounting your max tracks, and you can basically pop them out and mount them back in within seconds, which means that you're actually gonna be using them all the time. Second of all, it mounts them outside of the car, so you don't have to worry about mud or sand or anything. And third of all, it's multi-purpose, because it also doubles as a really giant outside table which is fantastic for the side of the troopy but I've also seen these things mounted on utes sometimes. So while it still hurts me to start drilling holes in the outside body of my troopy it's now time to mount this beast here. Paint is dry and we're pretty much ready to mount the Maxx table. However, I don't really want to mount the metal straight on top of my paint job. So that's why I went to a car wrapping station and just kindly asked them if they could give me an off cut of um, clear vinyl wrap. So I'm going to cut off a little bit of a section and glue this in between so that the steel is not directly touching the paint job. In the next episode we'll be installing a 95 liter water tank and I'll talk you through the water supply and filtration system.